All right, well, here's a quick little video update. Um, we uh, had a little accident here on the Mustang, and, uh, well, let's just say that a jack slipped off of the cross member um, and landed on the bottom of the oil pan, and it's got a cast aluminum oil pan in it because it's a Toyota motor. And uh, so it has a nice crack in the oil pan. And uh, so we tried to patch it up with some uh, little uh, epoxy, and uh, it lasted about, oh, two days and started with a very tiny leak and every day after that it was leaking more and more so uh we couldn't have that so i don't want to pull the motor out of this thing to replace the oil pan and i've always wanted a tig welder so i bought a tig welder so that i could learn to tig weld and weld aluminum whenever i needed to weld aluminum and uh so this is what i ended up going with um it, it is a basic level uh tig machine from eastwood uh, obviously it's not a miller or a lincoln and I really didn't want to spend two thousand, three thousand dollars on an ACDC setup from them. This is a nine hundred dollar welder, and if you're uh, looking for a basic entry level uh, TIG machine, I think this is just based on my research was one of the better ones that you could get. Uh, short of you know going to eBay and getting a four or five hundred dollar unit made from China that you have no support on, no parts list. This thing, obviously, if you've ever bought anything from Eastwood or called their support, they're pretty good and I've been in business a long time. And I know it's Chinese made, but they do stock parts. And uh, the TIG Torch is, uh, uses all the common consumables and stuff that you can get at your local welding supply. So that's good. I'm using the um, thumb control for right now uh, because when I get up under here to weld this oil pan from underneath the car, um, I won't be able to use the foot pedal. So I'm practicing and learning how to use the get a static setting on the welder and then um, using that to uh, you know to control the uh, you basically it's it's a static setting so whatever is the welder set at is you know there's no variability in the in the thumb control so um, and on the on the car we're just gonna do you know one inch or so stitches so that we don't superheat that oil pan um, and you know melt the gasket out of it or whatever so just gonna do a little bit, let it cool, and then do some more. So uh, anyway, gonna do a little practicing on it. I've, I've done a little bit of practicing, and this is the first time ever I've TIG welded before, and uh, I'll have to say it's uh, it's quite an experiment. Uh, I need Jody from Welding Tips and Tricks to come come uh, help me out. But anyway, enough rambling on, and uh, we got a lot of projects going on out here. Um, I haven't made any videos, and but I, I probably will make one on this little project that we got going here um, at some point but we're just going to do a quick video and uh, show you the TIG welding and uh, we'll keep you updated when we get ready to uh, fix this bad boy and uh, we'll go from there all right well we're gonna uh, do a little welding here got some 16th inch aluminum and I've mostly been trying to practice with aluminum since that's what I'm gonna have to weld on and uh, so far I've just been using, uh, for the most part, good clean aluminum, but I've I also got a, an old cast iron bracket and practiced on that a little bit. And uh, that was interesting, very dirty. So one of the things that you want to do when you're welding is, you know, make sure you have some professional welding gloves, not just regular mechanic gloves with holes in the fingers. That'll be real important. You also want to wear some protection on your, your arms like I have here. So. Uh, We'll see how this goes. Uh, you know, I'm a I'm a rookie for sure, trying to get in position and get comfortable here. So we're gonna put a couple of tacks on it, and then uh, and we'll take the clamp off and weld it.
don't quite have enough heat in the welder. All right, let's see if we can get a tack on it now. Well, we got a tack on there, but it's not very good at still them. I think I got enough heat. I'm going to bump it up a little more. One of the things I got to remember to do that I'm not used to remembering to do is uh, leave the leave the torch over it to let the shielding gas protect it, keep contaminants out. I just get up and walk off like a, a, I normally would with a MIG welder. That's the problem with trying to weld a continuous bead uh, without a foot control because it the metal gets hotter and hotter as you go you have to back off on it and because I've got the static button and I'm not gonna do this on the car I'm just gonna weld you know maybe a couple of inches and then let it cool so the static will work fine but you can see it got hotter and hotter and it just got to where it you know was blowing through there so um, all right let me finish welding this I'll just do that off camera and come back I'm gonna see just see how good of a job I can do filling in a, a hole like that, and then I'll, I'll weld the rest of it. All right, there's the two holes that blew out, and I filled those in. You know, I mean, if you ever need to fill in a hole, it's, you've seen a big hole like that with a MIG welder and the kind of damage it can do trying to fill it in, but uh, at least I got it filled. Um, I had too much heat down here, and, and it, you can see it's really working in there. So I flipped the panel around, I, you know, it was coming this way, so I flipped it around and started on this end, turned the heat down a little bit and welded like, you know, one inch uh, sections and um, turned the heat down. You can see it's uh, a little more of a puddle buildup where down here it's uh, really flat, you know, which would indicate that it's too hot. Um, so let's see what it looks like on the back and see if it fused both of them together. You can see here where it totally melted and fused it together all the way down. And then up here, um, not so much, not as much. So uh, 16th inch, you know, it's uh, fairly thin. One thing is, it says it needs to have a green uh, tungsten in here, 16th of an inch, and it's got a red one. That's the only thing it came with. So I don't know how much of a difference it makes, but I am going to get the right tungsten uh, for it. So uh, anyway, that's that. I'll wrap this up and upload it, and uh, we'll come back and show you when we get ready to make the repair on the car and see how that goes. I'm going to do some more, obviously a lot more practicing and uh, practicing on the uh, on the uh, the cast uh, the cast aluminum bracket that I have, and if I can hopefully find another piece or two of cast aluminum that I can practice on and uh, go from there. There's a whole bunch of settings on this thing too. Well, not a whole bunch, but a few. And I really don't know what they all are uh, exactly. So I um, need to work on that some more too. I've read up on it a little bit, but I need to look at it some more. Not a, little, not a lot of YouTube videos on that. There's three or four out there, not too many. Uh, the welder's been out, I think, two or three years now. So 
Um, all right, guys, that's a wrap. We'll uh, show you more later on.